Hi, very, very, very good morning. There was this proverb, I don't remember the exact wording, but uh, it said something like this, that, uh, you know, if you get cheated once, it's a tragedy. If you get cheated twice, it's a coincidence. If you get cheated thrice, then you are a fool. Don't you think that makes sense? So many of us are so trusting, so benevolent, so soft on others that we give everybody the benefit of doubt and we say, no, no, no. How can I be rude to this person? How can I cut off this person? How can I be judgmental about this person? And we start trusting. Now, today I'm going to be talking about something which is totally the reverse of what I teach in uh, counseling. What do we do in counseling? Those of you who have been through counseling training, you know that we tell you that you have to be non judgmental. You should not, you know, judge a person. You should not label a person. You should have total unconditional acceptance of the uh, person. Yes. Why do we say that? Because when you are dealing with a counselee, when you are in a counselling situation, you are not doing a business transaction with that person, you are not establishing some sort of relationship or uh, marriage or anything uh, you know, uh, to do with a permanent connection with that person. You are not involving any money with uh, that uh, person. So if you genuinely want to help that person, <coughs> If you want to help that person at the purely at the emotional level, then what do we do? We say that you should not judge, you should not, uh, you know, uh, try to uh, evaluate the person. I even go to the extent of saying that when counseling, even if you know that your counselee is telling a lie, he's not telling a truth, say accept it. How does it make a, a, a difference to you? But today, what I am going to be talking about is outside of the counseling purview. See, we all have certain important relationships. We all have to you know, undergo what I would call as transactions. And I'm not uh, restricting it to financial transactions. We have so many different types of uh, uh, transactions. We invest in people, right? Sometimes we invest with money. Sometimes we invest with our emotions, with our, you know, uh, giving of our time or energy or effort or gestures or whatever it is. Now, as you know, I'm sure you are very clear on that. Whenever we make an <coughs> investment, we expect returns. Investment is not charity. You cannot give unconditionally. And more so, at the time of uh, uh, investment, you have to understand if you have choices, you always have choices, in fact, where you should invest, to what extent you should invest, how much you should invest. And that is what I wanted to discuss with you uh, today. Even when I talk about very close relationships, you know, the closest relationship, be it a spouse, be it a child, be it your uh, best friend, I inevitably talk about the fact that I have identified four pillars <coughs> which contribute towards or which, uh, you know, are responsible for a good, close, long-term relationship. The first one is communication, how well you can express to each other, how uh, comfortably you can emote with that person, come out with your deepest emotions. Even if you know that is going to be you know, uh, an argument, even if you know the other person is going to disagree, but no, this person is important to me, so I am going to say what I truly and genuinely feel. The second is what I call as respect. You know, respecting the fact that other human beings, however close to you, have their own upbringing, have their own attitudes, have their own value systems, have their own likes and dislikes. So, do I respect the other person and that if I don't have to agree with the other person, but I have, I have to respect the person. The third in this is trust. And of course, the fourth is commitment. Unless you are committed to a relationship, you really won't be able to be successful in maintaining a long term relationship. So 
I'm keeping commitment uh, aside and I'm coming back to the third one, which is trust. Now, when we talk about trust, I want you to first understand that if I am the type of person who trusts people very easily, as I was saying, you know, some people say, no, how can I be judgmental? How can I doubt this person? He himself said that he will do this to me. So I have taken his word for it. No, that's not the right thing to do. You can do it only, as I said, if it is charity. If there is a beggar on the road and I'm giving him 10 rupees, it is charity, right? If it turns out later that he is an alcoholic or a drug addict or a wife beater, it still doesn't matter to me. You say, I saw that he was so poor. He didn't have proper clothes on his back. He looks so emancipated. I said that 10 rupees, 100 rupees, whatever I gave him. It's okay. It didn't, didn't pinch my pockets. I gave it. Only thing is, maybe next time I will not pay him money. That's it, right? And that's why I said that that's a one-sided relationship. That is a relationship of charity. But supposing you are going to invest 100 rupees or 1 lakh of rupees or 1 crore of uh, rupees, you are obviously doing it with the intention of getting a return from uh, it, isn't it? So that is where today's topic, that is, this concept of trust comes in. Let me make it very clear to you that trust takes and should take a long time to build up. Those who have a look at a person and say, yes, I'm trusting this person. And no, I look at his face, I don't like him, so I don't trust him. I think they are taking a chance. I think they are being very impulsive. However good you are in evaluating people, you can't do it momentarily. You can't do it by what they have promised. As you know, in this world, we have a lot of what we call as glib talkers, people who can very easily convince. They'll come to you with a long story saying, I can do this. I have done this. I am capable of giving you that and I want to help you and I want to be good to you and I will give you this in return, whatever they come out uh, with. Some of us have this habit of taking their word for it and believing them. And those of us are, are the people who suffer in relationships, in financial transactions and so many things. So today I'm going to give you a few very useful and simple tips on deciding, as the topic says, to know who to trust, in what areas to trust, and to what extent to trust. And if the trust is broken, how to proceed. That is what we are going to do. But let me quickly take you back into history which as I know most of us hated and that's the reason why we never gave it importance. But history repeats itself. The lessons of history are there for us and unless we learn from them, we'll make the same mistakes. What used to happen in history books, if you recall from your childhood days, they talk about kings, they talk about wars, they talk about this empire conquered that empire, this kingdom took over that kingdom and all. Just go back, take a child's uh, history book and browse through it. Everywhere, every now and then you will find an element of cheating, betrayal. This king had a fort. He had a very good army. He was a very courageous man. His soldiers were very good. They were willing to fight and defend their uh, fort. They were all ready to do it. And what happened? One trusted fellow, one general, one officer, somebody quietly went down and opened the huge door of the fort. And the enemy straight walked in and they conquered. So what happened? This king apparently did not have that basic life skill of judging a person. I am promoting this person to a position of responsibility. I'm giving him the authority to hold the keys to the gate. Can I trust him to do that? Even if there have been other areas in which he has been trustworthy, have I evaluated him for this particular thing? No, I have not. And history 
is replete with such examples. If we don't study history and if we don't learn from it, we are giving up something which is available to us free of cost. Okay, kingdoms and this and that may have gone. And even if they are there, we are not directly involved. We are not kings and presidents. So let's come to our basic day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life. Innumerable people get cheated, for example, in business. They trust a partner. They go into a partnership and then later they realize that the partner has ditched me. They have customers whom they trust and they start building up a big uh, you know, business transaction with them and so much of credit is given and one fine day that customer refuses to pay and I realize that I have lost out on such a huge amount of money that was due to me. I remember some of these small uh, shops at one time used to put up that nice Archie's poster. It used to read something like this, you know, I no give credit. Then below that it says, I give credit, you no pay, I get mad. I no give credit, you get mad. Better you get mad. As simple as that. Why do I take a chance of giving you credit and then you don't pay me and then I get upset? Okay, fair enough. You are upset that I'm not giving you credit. It's up to you. But I no give credit. Simple philosophy, no? A lot of people who come from that hardcore business sense who know how to do commercial transactions. There are certain communities which have been famous for how successful they are in business. They didn't do MBAs and they didn't go to Harvard and MITs and IIMs and all. Yet, they are far more successful than so many other people. Why? Because this is the skill that they have built up. They also want to have their uh, uh, business. They also want to do uh, well. They want to expand. But they know whom to trust, how much to trust, in what areas to trust, and when to hold back. That's the reason why I started off with that uh, quote, which I am not able to quote in the correct words. First time you get cheated, it is a tragedy. Second time you are cheated, it is a coincidence. Third time you are cheated, you are a fool. As simple as that is, right? So let us understand that this question of trust governs our life in so many different areas. I spoke about kingdoms and uh, large empires and countries and societies. I spoke about business. Let me also tell you about the most sensitive area that is close relationships. Haven't you had at least a few friends or relatives who came to you and said, I trusted this person and I got married to this person and I got cheated by this person. And now I am feeling very miserable. Either the marriage has broken up or the marriage is going on in a very, very unpleasant manner because of extraneous uh, compelling reasons. Either way. The fact is when this person says that I got cheated. As a counselor, I come across so many people no, who come and say that I am devastated. I am very hurt. I feel cheated because this is, this is what my spouse did. I trusted my spouse, they say. But my question to them is, <clears throat> I told, tell, keep reminding you to build a good relationship. Let's say a close relationship like marriage. You have to build on these four pillars. How is your communication? How much do you respect each other? And how much is the trust? Did you build up that trust? Did you take efforts or did you take it for granted that just because this person has committed in matrimony to me, Forever and forever, this person is going to be loyal to me and is never going to let me down. He or she is human. They have their likes and dislikes. They have their attitude. They have their reactions to certain things that happen in uh, life. So many people who do things to spoil a relationship. When I talk to them, they say it is because of what the other person did. The other person insulted me. The other person hurt me. 
the other person you know hit me on my ego the other person put down some loved one of mine and that got me so upset that i decided that i don't owe any loyalty to this person and that is why i went ahead and i did what i wanted so are we taking that trouble to find out that am i trusting it goes all the way down to a child i've come across cases of <clears throat> very elderly people coming and saying my own child has let me know he said i am doing some business and all that i need to create a, a mortgage or a loan so please transfer the property in my name so that i can build up on my uh, business i said he is my own child and anyway i am i am going to will my property so might as well give it and once i gave the property to the child he has let me down so badly he doesn't allow me to live in my own house he has thrown me out he has done this he has done that all these factors that's why i am giving you such a wide range of examples to understand what happens okay so with that let me move on to the practical aspects of how to know who to trust and to what extent please start becoming a little more observant about human behavior it is not at all difficult if you make it a habit i remember a bollywood movie i'm forgetting the name in which there's this girl who wants to get married and she is you know trying out these uh, what do they call it the marriage portals and all that so they fix up and then they are supposed to meet let's say in a coffee shop and have a chat and see whether to take it forward now she is asking this advisor of hers what are the questions that i should ask or what should i observe when he is talking to me to find out whether he is suitable or not this man gave a gem of an advice he said don't bother about how he talks to you because he is trying to woo you right he is trying to win over you so he will make sure that he will be at his best his behavior his language his demeanor his expressions everything will be ideal you will never come to know he said instead of observing how he talks to you observe how he talks to the waiter in the coffee shop that gives him out he's talking very sweetly to this girl and he turns around and snaps at the waiter how long will you take to get coffee or the coffee was very cold and you know he is giving you straight away some hints about his temperament and the more you go into that the more you try to analyze the person's behavior not with you but in so many other aspects i have been working for 10 years how many jobs have you changed if the guy has changed half a dozen jobs in 10 years it speaks something about him right he will give you reasons he'll say no it was because of this because of that no there's always a factor that i need to pull up my antenna and see why is it that this person has changed five jobs in 10 years there may be reason for it go ahead and find out how it is sir the second thing to understand before we go deeper into any relationship is what are the areas in which i i want this person to be trustworthy there are a lot of people who are 100% trustworthy in one aspect of life but not at all trustworthy in another aspect of life a person for example may be very very trustworthy as far as money is concerned you have given him a 100 rupees to as payment for something which costs 90 rupees even if he doesn't have the change next time he meets you he'll pull out a 10 rupee note and give it to you and say see you had given me 100 rupees whereas it costs only 90 so here is your 10 rupees are you are what is 10 rupees so no 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 i am very clear i don't keep people's money it costs 90 that time i didn't have change so i kept that uh, change ready when i meet you i'll give it to you now you see is very trustworthy in money matters but does that necessarily mean that he is trustworthy in keeping up to his word he promises you that i will go and talk to so and so and get such and such work done and you trust him and you realize he has not done it 
He has not only not done it, he hasn't even had the courtesy to inform you that I am not doing it or I have not done it. He takes it for granted. Even when you ask him next time, he says, oh yeah, I had told you, no, yeah, I wanted to do it, but you know, I completely forgot. Now that shows that he is not trustworthy in a certain area. So start listing out. If somebody is important to you and you want to have an ongoing or a long-term relationship with that person, please start testing him out in these areas. Sometimes other people will tell you. For with you, he may be very nice, but you know, whenever he, he gives some commitment or he says something, he is so unpunctual. He says that I will come at uh, 10 o'clock and he turns up at 11.30. And he's not even repentant, you know. He says, Are, yeah, I got held up in the traffic or some silly excuse he gives. And he doesn't seem to be, you know, even apologize. So now you know that this is the temperament of this person. I cannot trust him to be punctual. Am I willing to accept him as is? Uh, uh, there is people who make tall claims. I can do this, I can do that, and we get taken away. Oh, this you leave it to me. I am an expert in this, or I have the proper contacts, I'll get it done. And after days and days, you realize that he's not able to do that, or he is, did not make that effort to do it. So, what do you do when he makes these claims? Ask him a few probing questions. You said that I'm doing this. When was the last time you did it? For whom you did it? How did you manage to do it? Where did you pick up this skill? Who are these contacts that you are talking about? How long have you known them? Have you got work done by them earlier? And have you succeeded with the, uh, them? In a very disarming manner, without looking as though you are interrogating or questioning him, if you just go around and about and start asking these questions, somewhere your gut feeling, your instinct, will tell you, no, I think this person is making tall claims. Once you know that, what do you do? You make sure that you don't go by his word. No, I will get a work done somewhere else. Or I will monitor on a regular basis and see whether he's actually doing it or not. So I'm not going to just trust him and leave things uh, you know, uh, uh, aside. I'll give you an example. I had this uh, counselee who had got into a business partnership. And he used to tell me that his partner is 100% trustworthy in everything. He says, I leave it entirely to him. I feel so relaxed that, you know, he will never cheat me. Even a one rupee he doesn't take from the business. And I'm so happy with him. What they had done was, these were two people. They had taken a neutral and elderly person who both, of, both knew very well as a third director. So they had three directors in this company, this neutral person, elderly person. He was not interested in the business. He was there just as a mentor or uh, you know, a father figure to them. One fine day, this gentleman came to know that his partner has taken the approval of the third director and inducted both his sons as directors into the company. Now you imagine there are three of them and he, is, he and this uh, elderly person, there are only two. So now he's got a majority in the board of directors. And when he asked him, he said, Kya bolta hai yaar? after all, they are my sons. They, you know, they are like your children. Why are you bothered? They will support you. They will do everything. I want the younger generation to come in. I want to reduce your workload. He had 100 reasons to be. When he asked the elderly gentleman, he said, no, he came and told me that I want your approval, sir. Once you approve, I will get the approval of the partner. I won't do anything without him. He cheated me. I thought he will take your permission before uh, uh, doing it. So I signed the papers. You get the difference. Why did that person do it? I made him sit down and work on this factor called empathy. That to him, his sons meant so much that he was willing to twist the value systems or the principles. For any other thing, he had not done it. For years, they were partners. But when it came to his sons, his loyalty shifted. And he knew that his sons are not capable of going and getting a job and making a career. So very quietly, he just pulled them into the uh, organization. This is an example, a real life example that I am uh, giving you. Similarly, can you anticipate, as I keep reminding that we have to anticipate change, can you anticipate what will happen if this person lets down my trust? 
do that what we call as the worst case scenario. In case this person, I'm going getting into a partnership with this person, in case he lets me know. I'm getting married to this person. In case this person behaves in a way which I feel I have been cheated or I have been let down or I have been disappointed, what will happen? Once you start looking at it, you can simultaneously look at what are the possibilities. When I observe this person, I will get some indication about how this person is doing things. I'll give you another real life example. This girl who uh, was getting married saw that he had a mother who was a single parent and who had brought him up with great difficulty. And he owed whatever he is today to his mother. Even before he got married to this girl, he used to take care of his mother, he used to take care of her finances, whatever, everything he used to do. But one fine day, he got very angry with his mother and he threatened her that, I'm going to stop paying you, I'm going to stop looking after you. And that mother was left so aghast, she was so dependent on him that he almost, she almost fell on his feet and said, sorry, 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 and then he made up. Now this girl knew this. Was this not a warning signal to her when he can do it to his mother, can he not do it to his wife? She didn't even think in that direction. She got convinced when he said that it is my mother who is bad and she did this. What? However bad the mother is, can he abandon her like this? And that's what happened to her. One fine day they had a tiff and he went off 180 degrees. He said, no, I don't want to live with you. I want uh, separation. I want divorce. And she was shocked that something so small or something so insignificant, according to her, can lead to a situation where he's even threatening. And the same thing happened. She had to fall on his feet and say, I'm sorry. And it became a one-sided relationship after that. She has been suffering continuously in that uh, you know, uh, relationship. When we talk about trust, no, in my childhood days, my grandfather had quoted a very nice uh, Arab proverb to me. It is, goes simply, trust in God, but tie up your camel first. I let my camel loose and I say, God, make sure that I don't lose this camel. Am I not being a fool? I have tied up the camel to, to make sure that it doesn't go away and then ask God, I hope that rope will not break. I hope nobody will come and open that uh, rope and steal my camel. That makes sense. But have I done this basic thing of tying up my uh, camel? Do a cost benefit you know, analysis. What am I getting from this relationship? What am I not getting? Even in the worst case, in, in some areas, I'm going to be let down. Is it worth it? Because there are other good uh, things in uh, this relationship. There are so many such things. I had learned about a uh, guru or a, you know, a big man who controlled an entire community. And he had appointed a sort of you know, regent, somebody to uh, uh, you know, look after uh, uh, the finances and this and that. That person used to extract his pound of flesh. He was a corrupt fellow. He used to keep on taking cuts from the community members. It went on and on and on till these people got fed up. And then they approached the big man and said, please replace him. You know what that uh, wise man, the elder one said? He has been for years and years taking things which belong to you and feeding himself. His stomach is full. If I replace him with somebody else, he will come with an empty stomach. And he will start extracting a greater pound of flesh than this other uh, person. So in a way, it's better. He's doing a good job. He's administering well. He's giving justice. He's looking after the finances. Everything he's doing. But he's taking a cut. So be it. This is how people you know, can look uh, uh, into it. And the last uh, thing I wanted to say before we move on to the second half of the uh, program is that whenever you find that you feel that you have been cheated, you've been disappointed, you have been let down, before you start accusing and before you start getting angry with the other person, first check your role. 
Did I trust this person too much? Was I blind to him? Did I provoke him in some way? Inevitably, you will find that there is somewhere where your goal comes in. First, remove that, work on that, resolve that, then go on to resolving what you need. Right? So I have just a few points. I'll add it as and when we go along. But as you know, I would definitely like to have some comments, some questions, some you know, agreements, disagreements from you. And we shall do that after a quick little break. Ah, so nice to be in the studio after a long time. So the curfew has been lifted and uh, very glad to be back. And uh, we are receiving a lot of calls, uh, uh, inquiring about, you know, any various uh, uh, online courses, offline courses and all that. And one thing that we like to tell everybody is that it's not about the courses. It's about you. Please come here, visit us. We are here available from Monday to Saturday, 9 to 5.30. Come down, let's sit down, chat, understand you better. And then, you know, we can tell you what could probably be good uh, for you to upskill yourself. Uh, uh, the, I can see a lot of DCS uh, 22 students in this uh, chat today. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you all are already working your, uh, you know, halfway into your program. Also, would like to tell you that uh, the admissions for DCS 23 uh, has opened up. And anybody you think will benefit from this program, you know, it's a program. Today, we were talking about trust. There are many such things uh, related to human behavior uh, that, you know, you could be interested uh, to understand self as well as, you know, other people around you. So this is a course you uh, can take it up to become a professional counselor or just to understand human nature and yourself more importantly. So DCS, uh, of course, is an excellent program for that. So all of uh, you who are uh, in Bangalore, uh, you know, please come down, please come and meet us. Uh, our numbers are uh, given here. Just contact us. Tell us we want to come. And you know, once you come here, you know, we don't let you go in five minutes. We sit down and we uh, discuss and we make you meet the entire team. You can sit, you can meet Ali, you can meet the entire team, see the classroom. So we would love to have you here. Uh, so please come down. We can discuss further about this program. And those of you who are outside Bangalore uh, and who are interested in understanding, uh, again, human behavior and want to learn counseling, we have uh, another program called IPCG, International Program of uh, uh, Counseling and Guidance. So please uh, come down. We'll tell you more about this also. I mean, yeah, if you, you can't come down, obviously, if you're outside Bangalore, call us up and we would love to tell you more. It is exactly the same program. The only thing is that we'll be giving you a mentor. It will be a self-paced program with a mentor. So either which ways, in Bangalore, outside Bangalore, contact us. Let's chat and take this forward, right? So I... Uh, Hand you back to Ali. Please put in your questions in the chat box. See you next Saturday. Snoopy the dog. Seems to have a lot of wisdom. I have learned a lot from these Charlie Brown cartoons. You know, they seem to be childlike and they seem to be very uh, you know, lighthearted. But there's a deep philosophy in it. The way Snoopy the dog is telling Charlie Brown that if he barks or purrs or wags his tail, you know that he is good. And that's one thing, you know. So many times we find that the animals and pets are much more reliable and much more trustworthy than uh, uh, human beings. But let's not be so harsh on human beings. There are wonderful human beings around us, but not all of them are 100% trustworthy in all areas of their life and relationships. That is the point I want you to keep in mind, that I can trust X with Commitment, very hard working. He will see that this is done. He will do that. But if I give him money, he squanders it off. So all you have to do is to be careful in money matters. 
but you need not label him as a cheat and say, see, I've given him money and he took it away and he didn't return it and he let me down in this. Doesn't matter. That's his temperament. But he has other good qualities, isn't it? Okay, Roshan says, from my experience, play a game with a person and you will know at once the qualities of whether to trust him or not. Wonderful idea. Simple things. Play some game and see how he responds uh, to it. Whether he gets short-tempered, whether he tries to take shortcuts, whether he gets, you know, aggressive in the game. And there you are. Such a simple thing can give you some ideas. Okay. Surekha says, character and competence are necessary to create trustworthiness. How can we assess these two aspects in a person? Now, character and competence. See, competence, I uh, don't think is directly a measure of trust. I can be a very competent person. Do you know that the greatest cheats in this world have been super brains? They have been very competent people, but they have used their expertise, their intelligence to cheat others instead of you know, taking them uh, uh, along. So what happens is, don't go by competence. Don't get carried away just because this person is very intelligent. He's got a great track record. And uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that he is trustworthy. He may use his competence and his intelligence only for his benefit. And he may not care for uh, others. But yes, Surikha, character is something very, very important. And character, again, at least to some extent, if not 100%, can be determined if you observe the person. I gave a simple example of how he, you know, uh, talks to the waiter or the auto rickshaw driver or anybody like that. Roshan gave an excellent example that you sit down and just play some board game or something like that and see, you know, how the person is responding, whether he's getting impatient, whether he's looking at shortcuts, whether... He's losing his temper. So many such things, you know, that gives you an idea about the character of the person. And you go a little deeper, maybe you do a small money transaction with that person and see whether he has stood by the thing. Then you know that he has character wise, you know, that even though it was in, involved a very small amount of money, but the person was very, very honest in those uh, uh, dealings. That is how these things go. Okay. Ha, ah, Saraf Saab said, uh, uh, greed is the most important hindrance in trust relationship. When this greed surpasses a limit, it destroys the relationship, whatever it may be. Yes, Saraf Saraf, that, that is the reason why I gave this example of this counselor of mine who had a partner. It may not even have been directly greed, but yes, when it came to the fact that he has two sons who are grown up, who have not studied very well, who are not likely to get very good jobs. And as a father, he got so concerned about them. Now, he could have come and told his partner that, you know, can we induct them? Partner may have said, no, don't make them directors straight away. Get them into the company. We'll make them work and see how competent they are. There again, he may have felt that, no, they may not perform so well and my partner may not agree to it, so they may not come. So what happened was, in some way, agreed selfishness or love for his uh, children, whatever you want to call it. What he did was he went behind the back of his partner and clandestinely saw to it that these people got inducted as directors. Now they have a majority in the board of directors and they can take decisions. His partner and the elder gentleman put together cannot throw out those directors or cannot do anything. So these are the things to be you know, careful about. Shobha says that I'm not audible. I hope I'm audible to everyone else. If uh, any such thing is there, please let us uh, uh, know. Okay. Khadija says, taking an advice could also help us understand the other uh, uh, person. Yes, that's another very nice way. I'm glad you're coming out with these uh, you know, very simple uh, things. Something which doesn't connect the person. Something where you are not directly going into a transaction with the person. <coughs> But you seek his advice. I'm planning on selling my old car and buying a new one. Or I was thinking that I will put my son into commerce instead of science. This person whom you are talking to is not an expert. And he's not going to be part of this decision-making process. But you want to evaluate you know, 
how good he is. So you take his advice. Observe whether he has vested interest, whether he's trying to impress the other person, whether he's trying to take shortcuts in that. And at least to some extent, you will get an idea about his character. Huh. There is the other. Uh, there was a nice uh, question. Where did that disappear? Ha! Huh. What if uh, Janvi says? What if the person having kind and caring attitude and turns up to be a cheater? In fact, you'll be surprised. Most cheaters have a kind and caring attitude. It's not part of their temperament. They put on a mask. They want to cheat you, so they know that they are trying, going to win you over. So they'll be extra nice. They'll be helpful. They will be very pleasant. They, they will keep praising you. But that is where, again, we come back to what I keep on harping upon. Empathy. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Think, why is he being so nice? Why is he being so pleasant? Why is he going out of the way to do this, this, this uh, uh, to me? If you find even the slightest doubt, then test him out. Ask him to do something where he has to take that extra step and do something for you. If you find that person is conveniently you know, disappearing from uh, the scene and not rising up to it, you know that this was only a... Uh, mask. This is how very simple uh, things, but this is how it, uh, you know, uh, works. There are a few, as I said, uh, you know, just uh, um, a few um, things uh, that I wanted to tell you. Sometimes you have to do what we call as a cost benefit analysis. Even if there's a cost, that means I'm going to be let down. I'm going to be cheated. I'm going to be disappointed. Is there a benefit which overrides this? This I learned long back when I was a student. There was a shopkeeper whom I had befriended and I used to go and sit with him, quite an elder uh, person. And he had taken a liking to me, so I used to hang around in his shop sometimes when I'm free. His shop was near a mill. You know, those days Bombay had those huge uh, textile mills. So those mill workers used to come to him to buy things. First of the month, 10th of the month, 20th of the month, they would come pay cash and take. 25th of the month, 27th of the month, they would come and say, I need this. In the next five days, I'm getting my salary. I will pay you then, but I need it now. Will you give it to me? And this person used to say, OK, write down your name in this uh, in notebook that he used to keep and write down the date and the amount and, right? and come back on the first and pay me. And he used to give all that uh, product to them. Very often I observe that. One day I asked him, do these people all pay you honestly? He said, no. There are some who cheat me. They write the wrong name or whatever name they've written, they never come back after uh, that. They go to some other shop and start buying from there because they owe me money. I said, then why do you do it? You know that they are mill workers. They are not directly connected to you. They are not... Uh, uh, in any way, you know, you don't have any hold over uh, uh, them. Why do you do it? He said, a hundred mill workers, you know, buy things from me. Ninety of them pay cash and take. Ten of them want credit. I give them credit. Because I give credit to these ten, the other ninety feel so nice about me that, you know, I give credit to their colleagues when they don't have money. So I'm so kind and so nice. So they continue their patronage to me. My business expands. I have a very good image among all the hundred workers. And then what happens to these 10? He says, statistically, two out of 10 don't pay me. Human nature is such, eight out of 10 feel he has been nice to me. He helped me out when I needed the money. So the moment I get salary, I'll go and pay him back. So that next month, again, if I need credit, I can get it. There's a selfish motive also. So by paying him off, I'm winning the trust of the shopkeeper. So next month, I can again ask for credit if I need money. So they come and pay me 8 out of 10. 2 out of 10 don't pay me. He says, how much is my loss? Out of the 100 transactions that I have done, 
I have lost out on two two percent. It is a write off. I conveniently write off. I don't go chasing that fellow or standing outside the gate of the mill to see where he is or what happened. He has not come back. He has not come back. I am not going to spoil my mood for him, and I am not going to waste my uh, time because that two percent that I lose out is something which I incorporate into my own mental profit and loss. You know why I told you this story is to help you understand that very often this, of course, was a money transaction. But even if it's an emotional transaction, sometimes it is okay to lose out by trusting somebody or by being extra nice to somebody. So you have this group of friends, and you go a little out of the way, and you help them in whatever way. It is inevitable that one or two of them will let you down. But look at the statistics. Is it okay to be cheated by one or two friends, to be let down, to be insulted, or whatever they have done to you? Because in the process, you have gained eight good friends. They know that you know you have been cheated, but you did not make a scene. You didn't get into fights with them, and with the others, you are still nice. That is what builds up the relationships, and. In that process, you attract more and more uh, people who are trustworthy because they realize that you are an honest person. You don't get into the squabbles of fighting with somebody, pointing out somebody's mistakes or you know, screaming at somebody. You take it in your uh, spirit. And that is the reason why more and more uh, people of the right kind, they start gravitating towards uh, uh, you. So very often it, there is a need. Now, let me also, before we uh, you know, come towards the end, any more questions, please continue putting on the uh, chat box. I'm waiting for more of your uh, comments or uh, um, uh, questions. Oh, yeah, it is there. So let me uh, tell you that. Uh, Kanupriya says, uh, uh, you know, uh, what I have experienced in life, it is really difficult to completely trust someone. The person might appear really sweet and that's exactly the point that I have been raising. There is no such thing as completely trusting someone. However close that person to you, you may madly love that person, but you cannot 100% trust that person. Some areas that person will not be trustworthy. All you have to do is identify that and accept it as part of the same way as the shopkeeper accepted two out of 100 people are going to cheat me. In two areas out of 100 areas that you interact with this person, he is going to uh, cheat uh, me. How do you identify that the person is putting on a mask? Test him out. Try him out. Provoke him a little bit here and there. Ask him to do something which he doesn't want to do. Observe how he behaves with others who are not important to him. His mask will come down. What happens is, when we start trusting this person, when we start putting our emotions into this person, we stop looking, we become blind. It is not that he has put on a mask, more than that, we become blind. I saw him shouting the other day at that auto rickshaw fellow. I asked him what happened. He said, no, you were demanding money. He said, this, or how can I let this? You know, this is the way they cheat everybody and all. Fine. But here is a person who lost his temper and created a racket on the road because the auto rickshaw driver demanded 20 rupees or 50 rupees more. Could he not have dealt with it in a different way? So this is my warning bell. Tomorrow he may be short tempered and he may turn against me for something. Am I prepared for it? Susan says, if you are trustworthy to self, everything around you will act the same way to you. Because when you trust yourself, you will trust others. Yes, I agree to a great extent, but let us not presume that just because I trust my, myself, people will also trust me. It is like a person who says that, you know, I love X, so X should love me. I love X unconditionally, fully. So obviously X should love me. It doesn't work that way. Human relationship is so complex. Everybody's needs and wants are so different. There will inevitably be people who, however trustworthy you are, they will not be trustworthy. Just be aware of it and be in that uh, uh, thing. Okay. 
Jamie says, how to let go cheaters when they hurt you badly and you are emotionally broken. In fact, that was the last point I had kept uh, to um, tell you. I'll just come back to that. Before that, you know, another, another couple of nice uh, comments. How many second chances can you give for any relationship, especially the closest one like you and family? No. Maybe second, yes, but definitely not third, fourth, fifth, sixth. You're hitting against a wall. You put down certain preconditions. I know of people, uh, you know, when you say that it's a, a very basic and a close uh, uh, family relationship. X tells Y that you do this, I don't like it. You do that and I will, uh, you know, get very angry. You do that and I will uh, do this, this, this action. Once, twice, three, four, five times. You know what happens? The other person thinks that you only shout. You don't do anything. I had read a very nice uh, cartoon of Dennis Menes. The mother is getting very angry with him. And he sa she says, this is the last time I'm telling you, put away your toys. He turns to her, gives a sweet smile and says, this is the last time you're telling me? That means you won't tell me anymore. No, thanks. See how he has taken it? Now, do you put it into action? So what I would request is put it into action, in small action at least. How we do with children? We say, if you don't do the, this, then you won't get their ice cream or I won't allow you your TV time or I won't allow you to go out and play some small little carrot and stick policy is what we need to do, even with adults who are letting you uh, dump. We just as we become blind. That is what I am trying to uh, infuse into you. However close you are with a person, however nice and sweet he has been, however long the relationship, please do not become blind and have that unconditional uh, uh, trust. I had become and didn't look at the qualities of the person. That's why I got backstabbed. That's what I'm saying. It happens very often. Protect your back, as a lot of wise people uh, say. And as Rima says, we need to make an informed decision. Informed decision, which is not carried away by the emotion that you feel towards the person. Sureka says, how can we help a counselee to not to get into black and white thinking after repeated betrayals? Even if not physically involved, he is emotionally straying by watching the other person's pictures extra. Wife is confident that he has not brought a closure to it and is contemplating divorce. What you can do in a situation like this is she is contemplating divorce. But is she taking any action right now? If she takes some small action, she need not separate and divorce. But she says, this I stopped doing because of these, these, these. There was a wife in a similar situation who said that I'm only going to cook one meal for you from now on till you, you know, change this one particular behavior of uh, uh, yours. I still love you. I care for you. I want to continue my relationship with you. But I used to cook two hot meals and give you. Now I'm going to cook only one meal. The second meal, either you eat leftovers or you go out and eat. I don't care. She did it for a few days and the impact hit him. These are all real life examples that we can try out, to, uh, you know. I had come to your center to learn to live without the person and come out of that horrible situation. Yes, Kadir, continue with your efforts. Whether you come to Bandara, whether you work on your own uh, self, whether you read up some good materials, but work on it. There are ways and means by which you can constantly keep improving on this quality of knowing how to judge people, finding out whom to trust in what areas and how to do that uh, thing. Ah, sorry. Let's talk. I kept this as the last point before we complete the hour. What happens when you get cheated? I come across people who say, I have been cheated by a cousin. Now, I don't want to have anything to do with relatives. 
relatives can never be trusted. I would rather trust friends than relatives. My own cousin cheated me. Now you see the mistake that he is making. Number one, one cousin cheated him on one particular aspect. He has decided that he has been fully cheated and betrayed and let down. And he has decided that all his relatives fall in the same basket. The second mistake that he is making is because he has condemned and cut off from all his relatives, he will probably go and give unconditional faith and trust to his friends, saying that friends don't cheat me. And one fine day he'll get cheated by at least one uh, friend. So whenever you get cheated, whenever you get let down, please work on trying to you know, rebuild yourself by being rational. Sheila has a nice point. There are people who are okay not getting hot meals at home and go to the darshani. So this method does not work. In this particular case, it worked, Sheila, because what the wife did was she knew how dependent the husband was on homemade food. He does not go to darshanis. You get me? Everybody is so unique and individual. There are people who, even when the wife cooks hot food, he will order a pizza and uh, uh, eat. I know that. So I'm not saying that every wife should do that. I'm just giving you examples here to show that if you are innovative, if you observe the person, she observed that this is a soft point in him. For years and years, she has been cooking hot food, both for lunch and dinner and giving him, and he has become dependent on it. So how do I hit him? I don't starve him. I don't uh, you know, diverse or separate from uh, him. I don't get into arguments. I just say, I'm going to cook only one meal uh, for you. So the same way I'm using these as examples to tell you that you can devise your own ways and uh, means. Puja says, how does one identify or get signals when it comes to relationship with spouse, fiance, boyfriend or girlfriend? In case of teaching in a committed uh, relationship, having an affair. Having an affair is a long drawn out thing. That is an extreme case. Maybe we'll take it up on some other uh, time and as a topic by itself. But before it goes to that extreme, you know, there are so many indicators. There are so many hints. Every time that somebody has come to me saying that I have been cheated by my spouse or my boyfriend, girlfriend who has had an affair beyond me, there were very clear indicators. As we had discussed earlier, that person was being blind because of emotions. And then the person talks back. When I start having a detailed discussion, the person comes back and says, yeah, I know once, you know, he was being so possessive about his phone. And the way he was talking, there was something he was saying on the phone, which, you know, I got very suspicious. He said, this is a friend of mine. Yeah, I was just joking with him. I was just repeating what he has to tell his girlfriend. But it didn't look that way to me. My antenna should have gone up. I should have from that time onwards started observing him more closely, evaluating him. I didn't do it. I went ahead trusting him. I went ahead with the same type of relationship and he became complacent. He said, I can go ahead and do he or she. I can do what I want because my partner, you know, at times is suspicious, but I can always pacify the partner and I can get away with it. And this is how the person goes on. So that's why, as I said, the last point is whenever you get cheated very badly, however badly you have been let down, it could be your you know, spouse or your partner, it could be a business uh, partner, it could be whoever uh, it is who has let you down very badly and it has shaken up your entire life also. But do not become so rigid to say, from now on, I will never trust anybody. Use that you know, drop of the trust as a learning lesson, as a stepping stone. You have now been empowered to deal with relationships in a better manner because of the tragedy that you went through. If you take up that attitude, work on it systematically, either by yourself or with the help of somebody else. As Seema said, please come over. We are here sitting. We don't charge money for counseling. We are genuinely concerned about people who go through bad issues in life. You don't feel like coming because of this COVID scare. Talk to us on phone. We do counseling on phone. We do it by email. We are every time available for this. So please feel free. 
work on yourself, evaluate, do introspection on so many of these things that we have, uh, you know, spoken uh, to you. And at the same uh, time, please be aware that help is available. You can reach out. You're not alone in this world. That is the message that we wanted to give you. So those who are in Karnataka, happy lifting of the curfew. I think this itself is an event. And let us hope this COVID business comes down and we get back to the old normal. See you. Bye-bye.